Hello, my wealthy wives and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Married Rich Man, as well as the founder of the Wealthy Wife Academy, and of course, your godmother, Affluent Romance. How are you doing today, wealthy wives and friends? All right, today we're actually going to do the singing bowl. Yes, I'm bringing it back. I know, kind of hitting this, but sometimes it's just not near me, so I'm not going to chase after it. But today I actually have it with me. So let's go ahead and start first with the singing bowl and our mantra. Today's topic is actually going to be on affection. We'll get to that after we do the bowl. So for those of you that are old school wealthy wifers, you already know what we're about to do. And if you are new to my Miss Sophia page, I want to say thank you for subscribing. And I really appreciate you having here with us. And if you've listened to prior, previous videos, you also know what we're about to do. Hopefully you listen to one that actually had the singing bowl in it. Here's what I need. I need you sitting someplace comfortable, preferably with your feet flat on the ground. I want you to have your keep your back straight. No, not overly so, but just straight. And I want you to begin breathing very easily, just taking a few breaths, breathing in, breathing out. And as we're breathing in, I want you to think about the most loving thought you can think of and you're going to bring it breathe in the energy of love breathing in as you're going to release stress take another breath breathing in love exhaling fear Take one more breath, breathing in the energy of love, and this time picture a pink light surrounding you. Breathing in love. And releasing anything that no longer serves you. Now I want you to close your eyes and relax your shoulder, face, and jaw. Keep breathing very easily. gently uh, as you're breathing like I said keep everything nice and easy your back is straight shoulders face and jaw are relaxed you allow yourself just to be at ease no worries no stress just ease Breathing, breathing in, exhaling. Now I need you to take one deep breath of me, breathing in.
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, sometimes, you know, I breathe in too quick and it kind of trips me up. <laughs> anyway. Ooh, saw. Okay. Hmm. Now, as we are now relaxed and your mind is at ease and you're feeling ooh, so delicious and delightful, let's talk about affection. Yes, in the world of everything, femininity and everything, romance and everything, everything, certain topics tend to be neglected because everyone's worrying about how to find the man, how to find the math money, how to dress, how to look, how to walk, how to talk, blah, 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 blah. And I think sometimes the topic of actually how to be present with a man um, gets overlooked. Or if it is discussed, it's on topics that really bypass some of the very basic elemental things that a man also needs. Now, I think in terms of, of affection, women are sometimes surprised that men actually enjoy affection. And I'm talking about just straight affection. We're talking about leading up to sex or leading up to something else. I mean, just literally affection. A hug. A kiss on the cheek or the forehead. Um, hugging him. Squeezing him. Saying kind, sweet words to him. Think about it. How often do you, if you're in a relationship, how often do you actually tell your man that you think he's attractive? Really? How often? When's the last time you told him? Babe, you are fine. You are gorgeous. You are handsome. I just... Mm. Just stand there and let me look at you for just a moment. And then as you're gazing upon him, taking in all his his mm, mm, mm you walk up to him and you just wrap your arms around him and you just squeeze him and just say, you know what? I so appreciate you and I'm so happy that you're a part of my life. And then you give him a kiss. That could be a kiss on the cheek or it could be a deep soulful kiss and it's for no reason other than that you really are appreciating him how often have you done that if you are currently in a relationship if you're not in a relationship but you've been in relationships how often did the man that you're with experience that with you did you let him know that you really couldn't keep your hands off of him once again this has nothing to do with sex it's sexy, it's sensuous, but it's not about, you know, leading into the bedroom. This is just bona fide playfulness. Something that just gets a laugh out of him. And you're expecting nothing, because sometimes women will use the affection as a way to get what they want. That just kills the vibe. Well, you know, if I do this, maybe I'll get what I want. If I do this, and what happens is if he initially you know, thought it was just straight affection and appreciated and was happy to pour into you, you know, because in that moment he's happy, he's feeling, you know, he's feeling, you know, lit up and just warm and fuzzy inside until he does do things for you. Maybe you ask for something afterwards or just hinted at something. But if that becomes the pattern and there's just never any straight hugs and kisses just because you think he's so adorable and so mm, yummy, then it becomes suspect. And then the question comes, okay, what do you want? Oh, babe, what are you talking about? I don't want anything. Yes, you do. Yeah, what do you want? The only time you want to cuddle up against me and cuddle with me is when you are looking to get something. What do you want? You know, see, this is when feminine essence and energy gone bad, just so you know. Because, like I said, I had to laugh. I mean, I, I, before I wrote Wealthy Wife, matter of fact, one of the reasons that spurred me and encouraged me to actually write Wealthy Wife was I have read the various books out there on how to, you know, find a rich man, marry a rich man. Jenny Salas, by the way, is one of my favorite authors. She's amazing because she's authentic and she gives you the, her point of view from doing it. Really, really admire her. But I've read other books on actually how to find a rich man, capture a rich man, trick a rich man. I've seen some scandalous stuff out there about how to attract a rich and wealthy man. Or rich man, not even a wealthy man, just a rich man. And sometimes it is that. Play like you, play nice, play like you like him. Fake, fake, and more fake. 
and I'll say this again, in due time, they do catch on because initially in that first glow, that honeymoon phase of a romance, and that man is really thinking, if you are the scandalous type, just so you know, I'm not saying those of you that listen are, but we know what's being taught out there. I've seen enough of it. You know, pretend, act like. I was on Clubhouse um, on Tuesday talking about how uh, that there was a meme right I'm sure it's still out there somewhere talking about we're not looking for sugar daddies and you know they want a sugar daddy give me give me give me give me give me and then you know they know these crazy memes about now when daddy's ready to collect that sugar and you know women don't want to some of them want to give up the sugar which I think is foul especially when you went into an agreement that was part of the agreement because remember sugar baby sugar daddy relationships are strictly you know, they're transactional. Most relationships are transactional to some extent, but these are straight up transactional relationships uh, in exchange for ABC, you're going to give me DEF. And that is generally put together if they're smart on a contract or an agreement, should I say, that, you know, basically puts down on paper what each person is giving in exchange for what they desire. So that way there's no confusion later on. Like, well, I didn't agree to that. No, it's on paper, baby. Signed off on it man and woman. I do believe in agreements, just so you know. Yes, I'm a stickler for details like that. Because they're just smart. That woman's again, there's no confusion, and then you can finally relax and go off and enjoy their, you know, the agreement, the arrangement, whatever that's going to be. But I've also seen things where women were led to, you know, lead men on. Keep putting him off. You know, keep telling him different things to prevent him from actually being able to enjoy your affection, or being able to you know, or they're using affection and whatever to get what they want. And then when the time comes, this man mis- mis- just basically misleading a man. And I'll say this again, that's wrong on so many levels. Just like women do not like to be played, men who are sincere have no desire to be played either. So if you've been taught to use affection as basically a trap, that's unfortunate. Because you really are missing out on something that can be such a great healer, healing energy for you and for him. That can be something that can take what has been a very long day for a man, even a long day for you, and just a simple hug, like I said, a kiss on the cheek, a a reminder of what you think is so amazing about him, can be something that really elevates this man's spirit. And it just gets him feeling just so empowered that he's willing to go out there and do even more. Say this once more, all this conversation around, you know, wanting this hypergamy relationships and, you know, the protector provider man. Like, I don't know you guys who, I, I have to sometimes wonder who these women think these men are because they must think they're robots. Some of the I've seen, I really think they think they're robots. He's just supposed to keep giving, 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 giving. And I don't know what they, I just, I'm like, okay, you realize there's an exchange, right? It's an energy exchange. It's, um... It's time exchange. There's so many things that go, because it's a relationship that's supposed to be benefiting both parties in the relationship. So if you've been using affection, I wouldn't even call it affection. If you've been using um, touch or whatever, because I hate to call it affection because it's not affection because it's not, it's, it's, it's insincere. But if you have been taught to use the hugs, the kisses, the compliments, as L means to an end, once again, you're missing out on what it really can be and what it really is. You know, I think there's nothing sweeter than watching a man light up when you hug him. And the hug that you get back, oh my gosh. Oof. There is nothing more amazing. And this is like one of my top, top three, probably of things that just really, really just just make me melt is, you know, I hug, give my guy a hug, and when he hugs me back, he just squeezes me, just, just, just ruffles strong arms around me and just holds on to me. You know, and in that moment, it's just that connection, that heart-to-heart connection. In that moment, it's just happy to be to see each other, happy to be in each other's presence. Like I said, men, I mean, real men, they don't get to do that very often. Because once again, women make the assumption sometimes that he's only wants those things because he's, you know, gunning for sex. And let me ask you guys this. And for those of you that maybe have that response, why are you so scared of sex? If this is your person, um, I would think you'd want to have sex with him. 
I'm just asking. I was reading something. I saw something the other day on Instagram, on my other Instagram page. And there's a gentleman, I can't think of the gentleman's name because I cannot pronounce the gentleman's name. But I guess he wrote a book. It's a book in reference to how to please a woman. And a woman has sent her, you know, sent a testimonial back saying that for the first time in a 22-year marriage after reading this man's book, she'd had an orgasm. 22 years of marriage and you've never had an orgasm? Are you, are you insane? What? I, I'm i always left speechless on stuff like that because I'm thinking I understand I, I still don't understand but I get why some women do not like sex because they have there's no fulfillment but that's a woman's fault yeah it's a woman's fault because you should first and foremost know what pleases you you should know the kind of touch you enjoy you should know what turns you on it's your body it's not for the man that you're with to try to figure it out because all he's going to do is use a thing, do the things he did in the person prior to you. That's all he knows how to do. It worked for her. Some of it might work for you. Good chance most of it won't. Well, no, most of it might actually, if he's really good. But there still be maybe ways that you like to be touched or kissed or this or that that he may be unfamiliar with. Maybe, you know, he goes a little too far right if he just would have smidgen more to the left to do for you. Just saying. I... I, ugh, I can't even say, I can't even say it because my, my brain is like going, what, the, what, what, what? To not receive pleasure in an intimate relationship because you don't understand your body or you're too afraid to speak up. Men's egos are not only become fragile when a woman has been lying to him about her him pleasing her and he comes to find out that 22 years later he hasn't done his job. That's embarrassing for him because he thought he was doing a good thing. And then it come to find out all this time she was faking it. So I get sometimes when women are scared of the affection side of it because if something does happen, it doesn't get turned on. And, you know, next thing you know, one thing might lead to another. But I'm going to say this again. Pure affection doesn't always have to lead to sex. Time of day. Well, then again, I do believe in having sex 20 all, all over the place, all different times of day. Uh, I just think sex is great. With the right person, it's incredible. Um, but I'm just saying this. If that is the only time your man is going to receive affection is right before he's going to get some, I can see that's problematic because once again, you as a woman are not understanding how powerful this is. Affection is just in and of itself. And if you're the one who has trained him to make the assumption that if he gets a hug and a kiss or he does whatever and you know, you just make the assumption that he wants to get laid, you've trained him to do that. Because I can promise you, it doesn't have to lead to the bedroom. I can promise you that it can just literally be experienced and enjoyed for what it is, a moment of affection and warmth and care between two people who really do enjoy each other's company or are in love. See, we have to get away from these assumptions. And that's what I, well, sometimes I get annoyed when women are trying to teach women about men. They have no, no experience with men or they've had bad experiences with men because they haven't learned about men. And there's a ton of it out there, ladies. There's a ton of it out there. Women teaching you from a point of view, once again, that is, that is flawed and skewed because of their experiences. Because most people we teach from our experiences. And you know, I'm not going to, there's no, there's no fear. And what I'm teaching you, I'm going to teach you how to be aware. I'm going to teach you how to make sure you're thinking your thing, your process through. But you're in here at Wealthy Wife and on my YouTube channel, it's about not always about you knowing self, but it's about you choosing your your experiences. And once again, doing it from a space of awareness and knowing. No speculation, no hearsay, no third party transfers, no talking to people that have no concept of anything. Uh, the worst person you can ask a man about a man is usually a woman once again who has no experience with men or limited experience with men. It's one thing to talk to a woman who actually has experience with men. I mean, really does talk to men, spends time with men, enjoys men, gets honest feedback from men. That's different. That is different. Or when men are telling you about men, men tend to know what, what men, yeah, men, men, imagine that. They actually know what they do. And they're like, I'm just saying, what a concept, right? But you have to be aware. And you have to be aware also that you are the one who's guiding 
Initially, it's your guidance that creates the situations that you're going to enjoy, you're going to enjoy or run from. And being affectionate, it's it's more like I said. The hugs are great. The the like I said, the kiss on the cheek, the kiss on the forehead, holding hands. Yeah, I'm a hold. I'm a hand holder. I love holding hands. I love 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 holding hands. I love being connected. You know, the touch, the touch, the strength, the warmth. That touches me on a very deep level. And it's nice when it's reciprocated. You know, someone reaches for your hand. You know, because he knows you like holding hands. And he does too. Or and he walks up behind you and wraps his arms around you, hugs you. Kisses you on the neck, on the shoulder. Just because he's happy to see you. And instead of being rebuffed or told to get off it, or, 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 or what are you doing? Why, what, why are you, can you see I'm busy? Oh man, that kills a vibe. Affection. That is one of the things that is a glue in a relationship. That is part of the glue in a relationship, let me put it that way. Because it's sincere. If when it's come from a place of honesty, when it's coming from a place of once again just letting your person know, it's like, oh my God, I think you are so adorable. I think you're, yeah, calling a grown man adorable. They think it's weird, but you know what? They they roll with it. <laughs> but sometimes it is. It's just I have to laugh because when they're honest about it, you know that 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 teenage that teenage uh, boy is still in there. He said the awkwardness is still in there sometimes inside of men. The, the, oh, I can't even explain it because it's so, it's such a sweet part of them. Um, but it's so cool because there's a good chance that that teenager did not receive lots of hugs. And then as the adults not receiving much, because once again, men, especially masculine men, they're perceived in a certain way. You know, they got the swag, they got the this, and you know, he can have anyone he wants. And, you know, it's just, you know, he's, he's just, he's just all the time. And it makes it difficult for them to ask for just the simple hugs or to just be allowed to be happy with just the simplicity of being close to you without it having to lead to bed. Because guess what? They don't want to always perform either, just so you know. They like the build up as well. The anticipation. You know, remembering the scent of your hair or the, or the, or the fragrance of your neck, your chest. Because, you know, if you apply your, your fragrance correctly, it, there's it's on several parts of your body. So he doesn't know. And each and every body part can have, if you once again do it correctly, can have a different scent. Oh, yeah. I remember that part of uh, when I did the uh, scent. The, what was it? Desirability 101. The Art of Fragrance. I don't know the class. But we talked about it in that class. How to apply your perfume and what types of perfume to apply on different parts of your body. You know, you want to become, remember as a woman, you want to be a, a whole beautiful sensory experience. So I talk about being the muse. The muse is an entire experience. She's not, you know, like one dimensional, two dimensional, and she is well beyond even three dimensional. You know, she is a whole experience. She is a one of a kind. And she understands, once again, how to be present with a man. And understands how to be unforgettable, to be in who is memorable. And she's unafraid, by the way, to be affectionate. When's the last time you rubbed your guy's shoulders? It's the last time you gave him a scalp massage. Oh, let me tell you, I give him a scalp massages, put him to sleep. Be knocked out of my lap, boom, gone. How often have you done this for the man in your life, or previously done this for a man or men in your life previously? Have you done these things for them? I'm having this conversation because like I said, I need you guys to be thinking differently. Like I said, there's so much push, 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 do, 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 do out there that has nothing to do with some of the, 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 necessary steps to build out a strong relationship because ideally if you're looking for these relationships and if you're doing something beyond just a sugar baby thing even a sugar baby relationship you need to understand how to be affectionate and caring 
I guess I've seen some women out there doing some cold, cold, cold things and they wonder why they get their feelings hurt later on because once again, they're insincere and you know, they're just, they're users. And in due time, that does come back to bite you in the ass, just so you know. Because the time is going to come, you're going to meet somebody that you are going to care for and he's going to be the karma. So to avoid this, just learn how to be caring from the get-go. So in terms of relationships, because I'm going to start doing some things more probably a little bit on in reference to relationships, uh, the upcoming masterclass. Now, I'm, here's my dilemma with the masterclass in reference to interracial dating, interracial and cross-cultural dating. I'm still debating if I want to do it as actual live masterclass or do it as an academy course. The academy course, I can make it a little bit longer and add some different details in there that I'm not going to have immediately on the six week live master class. So I have not made up my mind just yet, but I'll definitely let you guys know because it is a topic that once again, I know for a fact was incredibly important because I'll say it again, they're pushing the agenda of once again, melanated women, black women with white men or men from different ethnic groups. Love who you love, date who you're going to date, but always understand that there are more moving parts behind the scenes than you're going to be aware of, especially if you're unaccustomed to dating men and of a different ethnic group or cultural background from you. Because that can happen even if you're in the same color zone, so to speak, but they they were raised different from you. You know, you could be a, a person of color or a white person who dates just white people or who dates just, you know, people of color or black people, whatever you want to work, you don't use the word black, but melanated person, uh, dating another melanated person. But if you don't share the same background, the same, you know, f some familiar, from, uh, some familiar, you know, references, that could be a challenging relationship. Same as it is for someone, you know, two white people come together that may have no commonality. So imagine if that happens when you when we supposedly look alike, imagine what happens on the other side of the fence when you're coming into to areas where you know very little about. And just because you see stuff on TV and I said they get on Instagram or social, other social media platforms doesn't mean you know a damn thing about it. So let's be clear. You're not. Every situation is different. Every situation is different. So I definitely wanna make sure I cover the topic because as this continues to grow and you know, blossom out because as I mentioned on the prior video, it's not a bit as big a thing as people think. Just because you see it all over social media doesn't mean it's really going on all over the place because once again, over I think like 97% of people of most racial groups are still dating people from their racial group, just so you know. It's only like a 3%, maybe 4% of the general population that is dating, you know, different people from different cultures and different ethnic groups. It's not a big, it's seriously, it's not that big of a number, much of a bunch of people as you think. So it's still going to have some references and some information that's just still uncharted territory. So either way, I stay, I'll keep you guys posted on how I'm going to actually put that information forward. But even so, this even this becomes something that becomes a big deal also in reference to those relationships because you have to also know your person. Because when I talk about being affectionate, there are some people out there that do not, are not clear on how to receive affection because they may not have received much of it growing up or their prior experiences have not been very good. This can sometimes be a reason why women are hesitant to be affectionate because of their history and experiences, their particular traumas and dramas perhaps around touch. So that's why I always say it's so important that you do know yourself emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. So that you can overcome working the things that you need to heal so that when you're moving into the space of being in a relationship, you can really put yourself in a position to be fully present in the best possible way. When you're able to open yourself up and to actually give and receive love, it is such a priceless experience. You know, when's the last time you, like I said, you just spend a day cuddling on the couch with your person, if you're in a, or in a relationship or, or previous relationships? You know, one of the things I thoroughly enjoy in my, my relationships is the fact that we know I'm a, we we know I'm a nerd. I told you I'm a bookworm, 100% a bookworm. I'm laughing because I oh I go on Amazon and just. Poof. I, I'm myself, I'm sure many of you are definitely funding the Bezos, Bezos, whatever his last name is, their lifestyle for sure. But I was laughing because I was on there looking at the title of a book. So I went into my, or, my return orders 
<laughs> my orders, not return, but my orders history. I have ordered over 400 books. Now, some of them have been Kindle downloads. I know for a fact a ton of them are actually physical books. I was like, oh gosh. Yeah, I was, I was like, I was literally 423 books. That was last count because I've ordered more books since then. And I'm laughing because I'm looking at my apartment as we speak. And I've got a good size apartment. My apartment is, it's, it's a good, it's a, it's a really good size apartment. And I'm laughing because I got to figure out where to put more bookshelves. Because I haven't even finished unpacking all my books from my move almost two years ago. I still got books packed in the second bedroom. But I would like to bring them out so I can actually go through, you know, see what I still have. And I'm going to give some things away. But I'm sharing this because for me, part of the affection is and 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 the the enjoyment of a, of a really great relationship is the fact that we can sit on the couch with each other and be reading a book wrapped in a nice warm blanket because you know vegas has temperature does drop in the winter it is not hot out here in the winter trust it is not warm in the winter out here but wrapped up on a blanket on a couch you know cuddled up he's reading his book i'm reading my book he's got his tea i've got my chocolate or my tea or whatever and we're just there with each other no conversation Maybe an occasional kiss. Hey, babe, what you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Okay, cool. But just to be present with each other. No conversation necessary. Nothing. Just being present. How many of you are able to do that? Because that's part of affection. Because that's just you being present with your person just because you love being with them. Like I said, no expectations. It's just you're just loving the time spent with them. These are big deals for men. And I have to laugh. The thing about, you know, just being present with them. I had to think about this. I think about my long-term relationships. And I would love because we'd be in a house together. And I would love it because uh, first one, 10 years, you know, he liked to watch scary movies. And I do not do scary movies. I am not into gory Blood, guts, gross. Oh my gosh, that is no. Or to be watching these crazy gangster movies. I was like, oh gosh, you and your violence, I'm out. So I would literally go upstairs into the master suite and, you know, be up there doing my thing. And usually it was reading a book. And it would always be so sweet because periodically down there, I'd be, I could hear across the house, you know, this flipping sound effects of a loud ass TV. Um, Sometimes, not always. And he would eventually, sometimes he'd come upstairs and just walk up the stairs. Come upstairs, come in the bedroom, and just walk up to me. Wouldn't say a word, just would walk up to me and would kiss me on the forehead. I'm like, what's that for? He goes, nothing. He goes, I love you. I was like, aw. It makes me all tingly and melty. And I was like, oh, that is so sweet. And that was it. And he'd go right back downstairs, his crazy ass movie, and, and be done with it. And the same thing with my last relationship. You know, he'd be sitting in his office doing something. I'd be sitting in the living room, I don't know, watching my anime. I love animation. Oh my gosh. Uh, or reading, usually reading. And he'd do the same thing. He'd come in from his office. And I was so crazy because at times I was, he would just be standing there. Just, I wouldn't even know how long he'd be sitting there watching me, to be honest with you. All of a sudden, I would just realize, come out of my headspace and realize he's standing there. And look over and smile at him. And he'd walk over to me, same thing, kiss me on the forehead. Hey, he's like, hey, what are you doing? Nothing. He goes, you just want to come and say hey. I was like, okay. And go back to what he was doing. Ladies, we love this stuff. So why do you think they wouldn't? So that's all I want to share. I just really wanted to bring that up because it's just I've been thinking about it. This is part of intimacy. Because sometimes people think intimacy is all about, you know, once again, everything goes back to sex because once again, our culture is just all messed up in the head when it comes to the topic of sex. They think it's all about the physical. It's not the physical. Sex is an energy and it's an energy that is very multifaceted, just so you know. So when I talk about affection, I want you guys to think about it. Current relationships, how often do you just show your person honest affection? Just because in that moment, you're just so happy to see him and you just want to touch him. Maybe you want to smell his skin. Maybe you want to feel his body. Just because it's like, ooh, you're my person. 
And I want you to remind you of this. And I'm happy that you're my person. Or in past relationships, I want you guys to think about it because these are things, if you weren't doing this prior to, this is a good time now to start unlearning those, 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 those processes and relearning how to actually be appreciative when you finally go into your next relationship. So that's all I want to share in today's audio. Like I said, think about what I'm asking you. This is very powerful. And it's something that's also very, very much needed in relationships, especially today with people being afraid of flipping everything. This is not a time to be fearful, especially when you're in a relationship or looking to be in one. So once again, you guys know I adore you. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.